Hey, what's up guys and gals? My name is Rick9G. Thank you so much for joining me today. We're going to be looking at Gilligan's Island. More specifically, we're going to focus on where the show was filmed, which I think is an absolutely interesting idea that I hope you will all enjoy. I will be giving away a Gilligan's Island Season 2 DVD, so don't forget to watch the entire video to know how to win it. Don't forget to take a look at the description for links to things like my merchandise website as well as other cool playlists for other TV shows that you may enjoy. Now as I said, today I'm going to be focusing on something that I really love to enjoy and that's looking at maps, looking at aerial shots, looking at even footage or images of the actual show. I will show them to you and try to overlap some things, try to put things together, two and two together, to notice where these locations are today. So if that's what you're interested in, then this video is just for you. Again, I'm gonna be taking time to look at these shots and line things up on maps and so forth. So I hope you enjoy this. Now I'm purposefully showing this shot because I want to look at the angle where this is coming from. Now, if you notice, I do want to point out the entire look of the lagoon. Notice that we see Gilligan on a raft and he's paddling toward the shore. Now, note, according to the story, where Gilligan is going away from, that's the farthest point of the lagoon, that's toward the ocean, or that is, goes into the deep ocean. And then now he is rowing toward shore. That is the side that the camera's on. That's the side that we're on. Basically behind us is where the huts are in theory. So I do want you to notice the shape of the lagoon because I'm gonna show you a few things. Again, our side or our shore side, you can see it is more rounded. And then as we go toward the ocean side, it gets more narrow. And it's kind of like an outlet to the right hand side of the screen. Notice in the background, there are trees. And then in the hazy background, you see kind of a mount. That's how you know this is not Gilligan's Island because that would be the ocean. But that is, of course, other terrain that's in the Los Angeles area. Now, conversely, this is the same shot, but reverse. So the camera would be all the way in the background. You see a helicopter coming in. Basically, it was over our heads in the final shot. And Gilligan is on a rock on the other side. Now what that does, it's a really interesting issue. If you do look at this scene, the helicopter comes toward us and it turns around and then it lands in the background shore. That is the rounded shore versus the skinny shore where Gilligan is at. It's just a very interesting shot. It shows us both sides of the lagoon pretty much all the way around. And this is helpful when we actually look at the map. Now here's an aerial shot guys and gals of the area. This is in Studio City, California in 1964. I will point these out with arrows and so forth. The big prominent feature you will see is basically a river. This is a river that snakes right around on the border of the actual film studio. You will see a lot of movie sets or a lot of, excuse me, sound stages. And then right to the left bordering that river is the Gilligan's Island set. Although it is a little bit far, I will show you again other shots, but there is an A and B side, A being the wider shore and then B being the more narrow shore that supposedly goes out into the deep ocean, deep water. And this is Republic Studios where they filmed Gilligan's Island. You will see a few very interesting things. That is pretty much the curved shape on top. That is, of course, the Los Angeles River that I was telling you about. And then on the right, on excuse me, on the left hand side along stage 10, you do have a very important street. That is Radford Avenue. Now remember, there's a lagoon, but around the lagoon, there were a lot of trees and shrubbery and bushes, so it extends farther than the lagoon. You see, of course, it is marked as jungles and cliff as well. Then if you look down there, stage 10 and stage 11. Stage 10 was used for all the interior shots. Whenever you see them go inside a hut, that is in stage 10. Or if you look at some of the shots where they're, you know, they're, it looks like they're outside and there's always a beautiful blue background behind them. You see jungle behind them, but then they're at the table. They're at their dining room table or in that little hut area. That is all inside to made to look outside. That is all in stage 10. However, today it is called stage two, right alongside Radford Avenue. Again, it was a lot of work, a lot of research to get all of these photos. Very, very difficult. Some of them are really, really hidden. But this is one from 1964, an aerial shot. You can see the lagoon there, but 
This is, again, 1964. The show started in 1964, but we don't know if this was before the show started at the same year or afterwards. It seems like things were prepped. It looks like that could be Gilligan's Island, but it could also be that it was just like that and then they redressed it a bit more because let me compare that to 1972. Now, by this time, Gilligan's Island was off the air. It only lasted three seasons. Again, 1972, you can see that there is a lot more trees and it looks a lot more believable. If you know the Big Valley, you'll see the Barkley Mansion is right there. They also filmed Leave it to Beaver in this same movie studio or TV studio. But you can see the lagoon very clearly, side A and B, and the trees around it. Um, the same type of topography as well. This is the same image, a bit zoomed out. You can see the two sound stages I was telling you about, the one all the way on the left, Soundstage 10, now Soundstage 2, right along that Radford Avenue that I was talking to you about. And then, of course, all the trees, the jungle, it can all be seen. Now, this is way after Guys and Gals. It's from Google Maps, satellite imagery. You can see that there is a big, fat building right there. But if you go back to the midges, you will see its exact same street. You have Radford Avenue, you have the LA River, and then that big, gigantic building where the lagoon once was is now a parking lot. Yes, they demolished or they filled in the actual lagoon and then they put in a parking lot right there. You can see some of the trees there. I'm sure they're probably not the same trees or maybe they are, but they have other buildings, but you could still see those two sound stages still there, still in the same spot. You have the streets, the river, it all comes together. You even see those little two bridges over the river right on top of your screen, right on top of the photo. They all match up. It's really cool to see. It is really sad to think that other than stage 10, today stage two, there's no real remnants of the lagoon or of the exterior lagoon jungle set. But they did decide to name the streets after Gilligan's Island, as well as a parking lot, the lagoon parking lot, which is kind of cool. And Gunsmoke was also filmed right there and they have the street for that as well. Here's another image that I found. It makes everything very, very clear. Gate A, that's the lagoon pretty much right there where it starts. Radford Avenue, parking lot, stage 10, or known today as stage two. This is again today. You can see it's a very big parking lot where you can see it occupy the entire lagoon space area. You see those two little bridges over the river. And of course, stage 10. I will also show you a side by side of that time, the 1960s versus today and age so you can line up all the topography yourself i mean i've known it many times but i just wanted you to see that in the middle of the sprawling very big urban city los angeles this is where gilligan's island was also want to note this freeway we call them freeways over here also interstates or highways which was very close to the sound stage and where they filmed the show they actually had to start a lot of the exterior shots at the lagoon area after 9 a.m., after rush hour died down because it got very, very difficult to film. And you can actually hear planes. There's a few airports nearby as well as traffic. So they had to be really aware of that. It's pretty comical to figure that out. And the last and final thing I want to show you, this is the final shot from all the color episodes where we hear it now, sit right back in here until basically the ending credits and we zoom in and we see them building a little fire and stuff. If you notice, there's a blooper here uh, Remember, Gilligan and the entire castaways are on side A, but we look on the left-hand top side, and you'll be able to see it in every single episode at the end of the credits, the sound stage roof. And that's really comical to see because that is basically not supposed to be there. Why is there building on Gilligan's Island? Well, because it was filmed inside a movie set. That's it for this video, guys and gals. I do appreciate that you allowed me to show you this video with my just pretty much off-the-cuff speech as well as using all of these images. I try to use a lot of arrows and circles just to make it as clear as possible so that there are no misunderstandings. So I do appreciate your support on videos like this. I know all of you wanna know how you can win the season two Gilligan's Island DVD. All you have to do is make sure that you subscribe. If you already are a subscriber, you're already close to winning the giveaway. If you're not, you have to hit that subscribe button to be eligible to win. You have to hit that thumbs up button and hit that like button. Uh, same thing as well. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think. Should they have taken the lagoon out or should they have left it there to make room for other things, other productions, and well, I guess a parking lot. I would love to hear that. 
And lastly, guys and gals, I need your contact information so that when I do pick a winner, I can contact you and I can mail you the DVD. So I do need a couple of information from you, just very simple, your name, your mailing address, as well as your email so that I can reach out to you and contact you. Um, and again, this is only for the giveaway. The top link in the description, you fill all that out and that's it. That's all you have to do. I'll pick a winner and I will ship the DVD to you. I will reveal the winner in the next Gilligan's Island video. Thank you so much again for supporting the video, for liking, commenting, and subscribing. We'll see you next time, guys and gals. And don't forget, be hopeful. Thank you to my top contributors, Kenneth B. and Verbal Volley, as well as my Patreon supporters, Andrew, David, and Joe.